It's ignorance and irrationality at the same time. I speak uh, with a sort of somewhat English accent. Well, we don't have an accent. You Americans have accents, you know. But, but I, I call it evolution. And in fact, they think I was saying evil-lution about creationism. Well, I'll take that. I wasn't trying to be humorous at the same time. But basically, I love this guy because he seems to have more genes in common with me than these guys. My favorite is, how large is God? Well, uh, basically, the answer is something like that, which is... They're certainly big. <laughs> the publication catalog is, that's one page, and there are eight similar pages of it. Some of you may know that I've been somewhat involved in the UK over the last few weeks in what's called the Rice Affair. Um, the Reverend Rice is an ordained minister who, a year ago, I, I advised the president that it was not a good idea to have an ordained minister as the director of science education for the Royal Society. Um, he then spoke at the British Association meeting saying that certainly should be able to discuss creationism in school with children. Now, of course, it's quite correct that you should be able to discuss the origin of the universe and the origin of life in the science lesson. It's a perfectly acceptable one. But the question is, who's going to answer the question? And it seems to me there's a problem for an ordained minister because it, to me and to many people, it doesn't matter if the earth was uh, created 10 to the 4 years ago or 10 to the 10 years ago. After all, it's only a factor of 6, isn't it, really? Unless you know something about indices. But it's really irrelevant. What can an ordained minister say in the church? Can he have his cake, his religious cake in church on Sunday, okay? And on Monday in the classroom, present the scientific case. I don't think you can do that. It is a problem. I don't disagree with that, but it is a problem for an ordained minister, and I don't know how to rationalize that. Well, Margaret managed to get me an invitation. We were going to Cincinnati, and the students said, you know, come, we want, you're invited by the students. What would you like to do? I'd like to go to the Creation Museum in, in Kentucky. They teach young children that the Grand Canyon was carved by Noah's flood less than, oh, sorry, 5,000, a factor of 10, 5,000 years ago. And here is Noah. And you know, he was Scottish. Because this guy is actually saying, we've got to build a big boat, you know, up here, right? I don't know what the Scots have to say about it. Humans and dinosaurs inhabited the earth at the same time, so clearly they rode them and they had on Swiss saddles. And basically, uh, it's based on impeccable research, however. There it is, the Flintstones, her responsible. And there is Fred Flintstone riding a dinosaur. Now, it's interesting, as someone pointed out to me, that the Flintstones are very popular, and it softens the kids up to accepting this nonsense. Okay? Just as Disneyland is softening the kids up to an irrational viewpoint at Austin's church in Houston. So I think we now really have to think about some important issues. And of course, it's Bertrand Russell, who really, every time I read anything, I think he's just fantastic. I think it's something about intellectual integrity. I mean by intellectual integrity, the habit of deciding vexed questions in accordance with the evidence, or leaving them undecided where the evidence is inconclusive. I think we have to develop global citizenship. We've got to stress the humanitarian aspects of science, the penicillin and various other things of this nature. Apartheid was defeated by global citizens, people who overall throughout the globe managed to do something about it. And I think the irrationality out there needs to be done the same. We, we've got to hammer away at humanitarian issues. This little child has malaria. I've been working with young kids all over the world, in Mexico, in Malaysia, in Iceland. Um, and I think there are organizations like Ines who are doing the best they can um, basically to try to have a global network of responsibility. And I think they focus on disarmament. I think we've got to make sure that young physicists do not create more efficient bombs. I think chemists should not be making napalm. I don't think engineers should be making better landmines. Those are the things that we have to get involved with. I set up the Vega Science Trust many years ago now. Uh, to, to address these problems, and we've made 150 programs, and it's a fantastic website with people like Richard Feynman on it and others as well. But I've set up also in Florida global educational outreach for science, engineering, and technology. I think it, 
really is taking into account new technology using the internet, capture station technology. Basically, we, the idea here is to set this website up so that scientists themselves can do the things that they're good at. They can do videos and produce downloadable teaching material on algebra, algebra to Florida, downloadable material. We can work from Florida across the world twice to India now, six times to the UK, twice in Venezuela and San Francisco. I'm hoping that others will do the same from all over the world. That's what we can do and I think we'd better do it. If anybody's interested, geoset.info is the site. But it's actually an interesting world and that is three incredible breakthroughs, Wikipedia, YouTube and Google. And I think we need to look at the dynamics of that very carefully. And what I did think about a few years ago was called the square world, the square where we all come together and discuss these things. And then just a few weeks ago, a young man in Brighton, some of us will recognize Brian, Steve Lurie, wrote, hey Harry, I'm not sure you remember me, but you, I'm currently a DPhil at Sussex. You taught me as an undergraduate. I'm interested in the science and religion interface as a consequence of the work of Dawkins, Dennett, Hitchens, and the reason for this email Sam Harris's work with the Reason Project. I just wanted to say hello and volunteer my service to be involved in any way I can. How many young people there are around the world? And I think the internet, Google, YouTube are the way forwards. We, Margaret and I have just paid for Freethinkers Square and he's working on this. This is his site and the things that he wants to work on. I think there's a really good chance that Sarah Palin could be president um, and I think that's a really scary thing because um, I don't know anything about her. Uh, I don't think in eight weeks I'm going to know anything about her. Um, I know that she was a mayor of a really, really small town, um, and she's governor of Alaska for, for less than two years. I, I just don't understand. Uh, I think the pick was made for political purposes, but in terms of governance, it, it's a disaster. You do the actuary tables, you know, there's a one out of three chance, if not more, that McCain doesn't survive his first term and it'll be President Palin. And it really, you know, we were talking about it earlier, it's, it's, it's like a really bad Disney movie. You know, the hockey mom, you know, oh, I'm just a hockey mom from Alaska and she's the president. And it's like she's facing down Vladimir Putin and, you know, using the, you know, the, the, the folksy stuff she learned at the hockey, you know, rink. You know, it's just, it's, it's absurd. It's totally absurd and I don't understand why more people aren't talking about it how absurd it is. I, 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 it, it, it's a really terrifying uh, possibility. The fact that we've gotten this far and, and we're that close to this being a reality is crazy. Crazy. She, I mean, does she really, I need to know if she really thinks dinosaurs were here 4,000 years ago. That's an important, I want to know that. I really do. Because she's going to have the nuclear codes. You know, I, I want to know if she thinks dinosaurs were here 4,000 years ago or if she banned books or tried to ban books. I mean, that's, uh, you know, we can't, we can't have that. I, these kids, if we can link them together, can pull together that sort of rational, that sort of precise incision into the stupidity of what's going on at the present time. And we're trying to work on that. Just two things. Enron's big mistake. They promised payback in this life. What a bunch of dummies they were. I mean, basically, I end this one because I do think this is my favorite poster. I'm an alien creature. I was sent from another planet with a message of goodwill from my people. The message says, dear Earth people, when you finally at last destroy your planet and have no place to live, you can come and live with us. And we will teach you how to live in peace and harmony. And we will give you a coupon good for 10% off all deep dish pizzas to, sincerely, Bob. The, issue, the three issues, destroy your planet, peace and harmony, but I suppose the main thing is the deep dish pizzas, okay, at least he's got a sense of humor. Thanks a lot.